Hello, gentle viewers. This is F Guardian, welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 25 with the Charlotte Silver Wolves. There's a lot of people on waivers, so it might be pretty smart to take a look at them, but first let's break down what happened in our previous episode. We hemmed and hawed about Giovanni Rodriguez, eventually deciding that we didn't need him anymore. And generally leaving the roster much the same as last year, with a few exceptions. Luis Romero was uh, a trade acquisition that could be one of the most important that we've had in a while, given how hard we've had to work to find a young, competent first baseman. And we immediately signed him to a pretty reasonable contract. Even if it turns out to be nothing other than a bench bat, this is pretty reasonable. And all it cost us was a few players that weren't that important. And we also saved a whole bunch of money by getting rid of Joe Welch. Um, so I feel pretty good about our decisions here. And only really Nemhard might turn out to be a really useful player. But he's also a long ways away. So that was one of our first important moves. Harry Ford. Um, I wanted a veteran catcher just in case. Um, this just kind of fell into my lap. Um, I also got Jonathan McDonald, who's actually a pretty decent young catcher, in exchange for a couple of players that would never have made my roster. Um, this is about them dumping salary, but also the fact that they didn't dump all the salary because I'm only paying 45% of it, 35% of his salary. So, is he over the hill? Maybe. But he is a reliable catcher with good defense. Pretty decent, actually, infield abilities and outfield abilities, too. So there's some flexibility there if I feel particularly jumpy. But also, he's a quality catcher, and he can help take some of the load off of Alejandro Rivera, who's our catcher of the future. Um, Mr. Rivera has never had a full season, um, but I like the idea of having Harry Ford to help us out there. Everyone else's lineup was there last year, but with varying degrees of increased or decreased um, playing time. Uh, Kellen Bulkley um, is going to get a full season, which I'm excited about. Chris Fowler might get a full season if he can stay healthy. Um, I don't love him being a leadoff guy, but this is what my manager wants, so I will simply shrug and accept our fate. Um, pitching wise, we said goodbye to Jimmy Harmon. Um, actually, if we take a look here at transaction history, I think this is going to be easier to follow along with. Um, Jimmy Harmon wanted all of the money, so he turned Jimmy Harmon into a new reliever and a couple of mid-grade prospects. Nothing too fancy, but Jimmy Harmon wasn't going to stay with us anyway. Um, he wants all of the money, and I was never going to be able to pay him. Um... Gunnar Henderson got a new extension um, for a surprisingly small amount of money. Um, now, of course, at any point, he could play not spectacularly. But I feel pretty good about him being able to hold on for at least a couple more seasons. So I feel pretty good about that trade. We made some Rule 5 draft picks. Um, some of I think have already been returned to their home clubs. Um... And yeah, old friends like Colton Hartman returned to the bullpen as did Joe Weishadel. Our bullpen is still pretty strong, but it is less deep than it's been recently. Um, I don't know why Chris Perry can't get a starting job, but if they want to make him into a super reliever, I'm not going to argue with it for right now. Um, I got to trust my manager to do what he thinks is best. Um, some people are going to want awfully big extensions in the not too distant future, and that's going to be a topic for a later episode. Um, Mr. Eop here just wants stupid amounts of money. 
Am I prepared to give it to him? Not yet. This is a guy who's never, he's always been solid, but hasn't really broken through. Um, he's not one of the top pitchers in the league. He's maybe a top 30 or 40 pitcher, but he's certainly not an ace by any description. Um, I would love for Sergio Carrillo to take it up a notch. I'd love for Archuleta to take it up a notch. Casey Choate. I have some really good young pitchers. They just need to actually build on their successes and be ready for the major leagues. Because once they are, I can say goodbye to a guy like Eob and not miss too much of a beat. But we'll see. Uh, we will definitely see. Definitely. Um, other additions. Espinal's been here for a while. Marv Jordan is new. Um, I acquired Marv Jordan because I thought there's a chance we wouldn't be able to keep Gunnar Henderson. I'm still not sure he's ready for a full-time starting role, but I'm willing to let him get some reps here and there and see if he could be our third baseman of the future. Jared Fauber is new. I just acquired him. Um, so that's a thing. Let's take a quick peek at the waiver wire. Is there anybody especially interesting here? Josh Gardner is not bad. I don't need a third baseman, though. I have two very good third basemen. I don't see too much value in letting him stick around. Juan Moreno is a really competent outfielder. Why the fuck don't you want him? I will happily wave Espinal here, who is a loser who loses. And happily claim Juan Moreno. Um, Kurt Matthews is also a pretty solid choice too, but I just picked up a pretty important first baseman, so I will... I will wait to see if we're able to grab Mr. Moreno here. Hmm. I'm going to try to claim Kurt Matthews, too. Let's just see if I can get both of them. Because they're both really young players with a bit more upside to them, and I'd love to have them on my club. Um, as bench depth, if nothing else. And they're also super cheap, which I appreciate. Thomason, you dumb son of a bitch. Okay, we got both Moreno and Matthews. Uh, Mr. Matthews, uh, Mr. Moreno gets promoted first. Like he's a nifty little player, offers up quite a bit of depth, and a nice contact hitter. Always appreciated. Uh, Marv Jordan is still worth keeping around on the team, but I'm going to go ahead and send him to the minors for the moment. And then Mr. Matthews here can, can come hang out with us on the Major League roster for a moment. All right, let us continue on with some baseball. Um, you can both go to the minors. That's fine. Like, we're as good as Zapata will let us be, um, but I still feel pretty good about some of these upgrades that we've made. Um, especially, I think our bench is stronger than it's been in a long time, which is excellent. I also need to be a little bit better about checking that waiver wire, um, but that's a topic for another time. Uh, damn, Juan Magana, he throw ball hard. He throw ball real hard. Um, Some decent upgrades here. 
Stefan, the Reigns of Casimir, um, some other guys. Varying degrees of slightly better or slightly worse. Hmm. Kurt Kirby hitting a wall is disappointing. I don't love that. Mm. I like how in this version of the game, increasing velocity isn't always the neck good. Like, the idea is that, yes, he can throw the ball harder, but the stuff doesn't move as much, which is kind of cool. Um, I like that idea. I mean, actually, it's one up, but you know what I mean. He's having a harder time controlling it and using it to its best effect, which makes sense. Um, throwing a baseball hard is really difficult, and it's especially difficult if you're not used to throwing that hard. So, we're not scoring very many runs. This alarms me. This alarms me greatly. I mean, it's still super early in the season. I'm not worried about it. We're getting shut out with alarming frequency. Um... There we go. We're starting to put up some numbers now. There we go. Uh, Chris Thomason is out for five weeks. This is an, a fascinating problem because I don't know who I would trust to be an everyday second baseman. Uh, Kurt Matthews is not that guy. I wish I had that one guy, that second baseman, the Japanese fellow that I left apart. Walensky's not terrible. I'm going to go ahead and promote him and let him do it. He's certainly not as good as Thomason, but he is acceptable. Damn, five hits, including two two run home runs. That's that's good baseball one right there. Is this thing that Zapata gets his elusive triple crown? I'm certainly not going to say that it is. But it'd be funny if he did. Okay. Player development. Not too many changes. Jorge Milanis is apparently now a frontline starter. You love to see it. Thomason getting worse is good for us if he adjusts his ridiculous salary demand. But I don't think he will. He's probably still going to want all of the money. Which is whatever. Mike Anchor got better. Casey Choate is getting a little bit worse. Which alarms me. I am alarmed. It's fine. Um, Jorge Milanes becoming a frontline starter is definitely something I can get behind. Um, I would like to trade Eob if I can make that happen. If somebody will give me a decent package for Eob, I think it would be malpractice for me not to trade him. Because I'm almost certainly not going to bring him back. Unless it is as a um, qualifying offer. I just don't think he's a good investment. I truly don't. I don't think spending $25 million on a three on a free war pitcher is very smart. Um, especially when I have enough interesting prospects that I would like to give one of them a shot. I mean, Archuleta is guaranteed to get the 40 man by the time um, by the time we head on down to Electric Avenue. But if he can improve, uh, he's got a real good chance to launch himself into the stratosphere. Um, we're just going to keep going. I'm not even going to stop to look at the stats yet. We don't have enough meaningful information yet. Um, a few people got promoted, none of whom are all that noteworthy besides Gavaretta. Now, Chris Fowler is becoming a problem. Chris Fowler gets hurt constantly. 
And as is tradition, I don't have a ton of other center field options. So we're going to start by going and putting him on the IL. As he is ill. And then we're going to find a new center fielder. What do we have on waivers? Anybody trying to be sneak a cheeky center fielder? No, it's literally all just mediocre pitchers. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's have a peek at our player development here. Who is the next man up for center field? Yeah, we're a ways away from Eddie Longoria being ready for the major leagues. Can I just call up a corner outfielder, or do all of you suck at center field as well? You're a terrible center fielder. Cole Long is acceptable. He might end up sliding over to play center full-time if that's the case. Somebody's got to take that roster spot. Or, or, we could check on trade block. Yeah, so I'll make sure for a guy who's also injured. Or the only guy that's even more injured all the time. Hmm. Um, Cole Carrick doesn't impress me very much. Yeah, we're already into like the dregs. I will call up Mike Mitchell. Well, I just have to figure out who actually ends up playing center field. I could use a quality young center fielder. Because Chris Ballard just gets hurt all the time. That makes him a fine part-timer, but he's not somebody I can trust to play every single day. So let's look and see, first of all, who the interesting center fielders even are. Center field. I like potential, but at least 55. Center fielders are really hard to find. It doesn't fucking help that certain teams are stockpiling them. Pat Phillips is fine, but not that good. I don't think he fills the need that I have. Connor Griffin would be lovely if he weren't fragile. I know I'm being really picky, and it may just be that the player I want doesn't exist. But I have to be pretty circumspect about who I acquire. Shake Buster is not a very good center fielder. Jackson Merrill is. But is also injury prone. It's almost like it's a dangerous position that gets people hurt all the time. Who knew? Brady Sizemore knew. Brady Harris would be pretty fantastic if not for his own injury history. I'm going to go ahead and put up EO, but now. And let's just see what kind of prospect or what kind of package I can get for him. Because I think somebody like Eov is going to be super valuable. 
So I would like to start by looking at a prospect package. Um, must include at least one green for me to even think about it. And so far, I'm not even seeing that. Yeah. Okay, new plan. Multiplayer package. I would like at least one center fielder included, please. Chris Fournier doesn't fill me with joy. Yeah, I'm not really seeing a lot in here. So now let's look at a single center fielder. I will look at all types of center fielders, but I, they have to be really, really good. Just casually acquiring Derek Curiel for a really good picture it just seems so stupid. I think it was like a catastrophically dumb move. Like, I'm not offering you nothing here. I'm offering you a pretty valuable player, and yet the hours I'm getting are all not serious. Brady Harris is decent, but expensive. I just feel like it's not a good risk. It's not a good risk to trade somebody who might be able to help us this year for somebody who I'm not sure will be able to help us this year. Um, especially when some, like there just aren't center fielders. Like they just don't exist. That is the biggest issue right now. There's nothing that I can do to fix that. Um, so we're just going to have to hope that Colt Long, or Colt Long can handle it. Because um, I don't have a better choice. There is not a better option for me available at the moment than him. That's where we are right now. Could Joey Newton be the answer? Sure, but he'd have to get a lot better. Like, now. So how's about we all find the center fielder of our choice and then hit them with, poke them with a stick until they get better at playing baseball. And if they start, if they don't play as well, just poke them harder. The beatings will continue until the morale improves. Man, fucking Escalante has been just such an insanely good player. I know, I have no room to complain when I have Zapata, who has been uh, phenomenal for a long time. Uh, Jacques Lode was also becoming an irritant. Uh, he seems to be enjoying... Oh, no. Uh, what have you done to me, game? Why am I so cursed? Uh, we're just going to let this run for a little bit, and then Thomason's going to come back and play shortstop for us. Um, the last door will he can handle it for just a few days, and then we will have a new shortstop in Thomason. There we go. Yeah, so the issue is I can't, like, I can't quit Fowler. I need a good center fielder. He is a good center fielder, even if he is fragile. But I think it's hilarious that the league as a whole is not able to develop more than five quality center fielders. Maybe six or seven at most, but that's just strange to me. But okay. I mean, it is what it is. Archuleta, you're going the wrong fucking direction, dude.
you're going from man with fairly bright future to vague competency, and that's disappointing to me. Um, I feel like I complain about center field, though, in every single series without exception. Um, your ERA isn't terribly attractive, Mr. Milanes. But you're a really good pitcher in spite of that. And I'm not that concerned about it. Um, I think you're going to be doing fine. All right, now we can actually have an appreciable moment to check out how things are going. Um, is Gunnar Henderson getting on base? Yes, sort of. I can't help but notice Romero is not playing. Um, I don't know whether that is an attempt to... I don't know why you're not playing Romero. I truly don't understand it. I literally just brought this guy in and gave him a decent sized contract and you're just letting him ride the pine. I'm gonna trust my manager though. Um I'm gonna trust him that he knows what he's talking about. Mr. Matthews is doing okay. Uh Josh Walensky has been a nice little offensive boost. Um that's very pleasant to see him playing relatively well. Um Mr. Bulkley is having a fine season as well. Um, I know he has the range of a particularly drunk statue, but he's still a pretty solid player. Um, we could get better at catcher. Um, I feel like Harry Ford is already showing there's not a lot left for him in the tank. But he's handling the pitching staff well. Um, Milani and Batty could be playing better. Quinn is pitching quite well. Ethan Varner, not so much. Varner's love for giving up home runs is going to cost him dearly. He needs to stop doing that. I'm not that worried about ERA, though. I don't think ERA is the problem. Um, it might just be inefficient defense, potentially. But the peripherals look good. The pros look like these are excellent pitchers that are just having some struggles. So, um, I'm willing to keep going. Um, I'm not going to make any major changes at this point. Um, and we'll just see what happens. Julio Sandoval is not a good player. He might be acceptable someday, but at the moment he is kind of crappy. Let's just sim. I make any moves. I really don't want you playing Matthews over Romero, but Matthews has been the better hitter. So I kind of think we have to let Matthews keep doing it until he proves he can. Mike Mitchell is just not playing that well, and I'd rather have a decent defensive backup at center field. So we're going to make that move. Um, man, Archer Letta has completely shit the bed in a very embarrassing way. Even more embarrassing than I guess where you will be shitting the bed. All right, let us advance up to all-star teams.
you're very excited. You want me to have a better farm system. I need you to stop complaining. That would be amazing if you would just stop it. Um, okay. Personnel, front office. I feel like me and Carlos are pretty simpatico on most things. Um... Who are my present coaches that are coming up? Lee, Vidal, and Novitz. Um, Mr. Novitz is going to be encouraged to leave. Vidal, I kind of want to keep around. I'll also keep Lee around. That feels good. And then um, we'll replace Novitz. Our team trainer's done a pretty good job. I don't want to replace him if we can avoid it. And then all the minor league coaches can have new extensions if they want them. Mr. Danny Fortier is pretty amazing. We'll go with that. Uh... Steven Gann is also very good. Oh, that's right. I need to fix the coaching view so I can also see player reputation on the tiring screen. Taylor Jordan is perfectly acceptable, if not outstanding, but he's, he's okay. Bobby Seymour is a really good coach. Um, he is one of many coaches that are in line for the third base coach job. Um... Walter Miranda is pretty great. He's not a great low-level pitching coach um, because he's not great at developing mechanics. However, I still think he's better than most pitching coaches I'd be able to acquire. Or Kerry Novitz. I kept calling him Casey. I'm sorry. I'm a little sorry. I'm just not that sorry. Um... Staff search in history. Here we go. So under coach ratings, we're going to customize the view and we're going to go ahead and add in um, relationships. And we're going to save it. We're going to save the fuck out of it. Huh. Wild. Okay. Um. Yeah, but I'm anywhere near the top half. Not even fucking close. I've been too good for too long. Um, and a lot of my prospects aren't working out. So that is a problem. Uh, that I don't have an easy solution for. But it is a problem. And so I really wanted to use Eob to restock the farm system. The problem is nobody's willing to give me good prospects for him. Which is disappointing. It's not surprising, but it is disappointing. Uh, Ernie Jarvis makes an all-star team. Is this first one? That's the second. Okay. Uh, Nate Quinn makes it. Gunnar Henderson makes it. Of course, Zapata makes it. I think that's it. So we have one, two, three, four all stars. Is there anybody else that's actually good enough to make the team? I don't think so. Our lineup drops off pretty quickly after um, we look at look past Henderson. Only his third ever all star appearance. And he's in all three of them with me. 
kind of funny, actually. Well, I guess he's a five-time monster. He just doesn't fit. Wild. Um... Yeah, we're just not that good. Um, I mean, I said that we're a very good team, but David Gaona is the only player that made. Oh, so did Prince Gia. There you go. Okay, player development, nothing too exciting. A Winkle, Winkleman, Gonzalez is getting worse. Carrillo's getting okay. Um, he's definitely getting better, which is good to see. Edgar Aguirre, despite his advancing age, just randomly added a new pick to his repertoire. It's not very good, but he's done it. Kevin Jensen is getting better. Dusty Hackett is getting better. Dusty Hackett is getting to the point where we might have to consider calling him up if we needed a, an emergency infielder. We're getting some okay improvements here. If I traded Mr. EO here for a package of prospects, what could I acquire? I need a green. A uh, green has to be included for me to even consider the offer, and then we'll go from there. Three yellows is not enough. Okay, hang on. We have the first trade that I might actually consider here. Let's look at these players here. Luis Garza is fine. I don't know that I am particularly enthralled by a player with such low batting eye. Like, he's going to make decent contact, and his pitches will go a long way if he gets a piece of them. But I'm deeply concerned about his lack of batting eye. Deeply concerned. Uh, Dave Ormerod is a really good defender. There's a lot to like about him. TJ Turner is a terrible hitter. I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait until the deadline and then see... You know what? Let me go and put Eob officially on the trading block and see if maybe somebody's willing to give me a deal that I'm just not seeing there. Because I think, I think I could get somebody like an Archuleta to try. Okay, him being back is really good news. But let me go ahead and send Mr. Lemon to the Myers and activate Chris Fowler. We have to get more talent into this system, come hell or high water. Um, because we're not going to bottom out anytime soon, nor do I wish to. So we have to start hitting more frequently on our draft picks. Um, which, look, we just don't have a choice sometimes. Like, we can't control that. But we'll see. There's not enough blue prospects for a really good one to make its way down to me, but there's a lot of green prospects. And dark green is almost as good as blue. 
I am indeed picking late. Yeah, there's there's quite a few here. So let's start with Tim Walsh, because I do need center field talent in the system. Tim Walsh is not Tim Walsh is not a center fielder. Jared Peterson is not a center fielder. Let's go back up to the top. Jonathan Knippers is pretty much only a first baseman, but what a first baseman he is. He's extremely smart. He's hardworking. He's cheap. I think we have a winner. I think Jonathan Knippers is a fantastic selection, and we shall be drafting him right fucking now. I'm just going to go ahead and pay him his desired salary. Like, I'm not even going to delay. One tenth of a second. He's that bloody good. Okay. Tim Walsh will hit the ball hard, but his offensive profile is very, very sus. Very sus. Um, he's not going to make regular contact, and without that, his power is just meaningless. Chris Wise is not a second baseman. He's an okay hitter, but he's not a second baseman. Does Ben Stuff have the stuff? He's a competent corner outfielder with a pretty with a pretty varied offensive profile. There's a lot to like about him. I'm gonna come back to him in just a second, but I want to look at Sean Tracy before I move too far ahead. Um He's got a lot of talent. Really good stuff. Not great at keeping the ball down. That's maybe his big weakness. Good control. Four excellent pitches. Good stuff. I like him a lot. I just feel like Ben Stuff is the right choice right now. I think his well-rounded offensive package makes him valuable. As well as the fact that, yeah, I think we're going to take. This concerns me. He's going to give up home runs. Now, he's got such good stuff, he should get plenty of strikeouts. So maybe I'm overthinking this. But high school arms are also highly sus. I didn't even look at Greg Little. Greg Little's kind of dumb though. Um, let's take Ben's stuff and see if he has and and see how that works out for us. Uh, Mike Greenleaf is a pretty decent pitcher. But I also genuinely need a good center fielder. Um Chris Burkett is actually a pretty good center fielder. Uh, Jadawan Spoon is pretty decent too. Let's go ahead and take Mr. Burkett here. Are you fucking joking, mate? I'm not going to pay you $4 million. Get fucked, nerd. That's more like it. No. I'm going to wait till the fifth round where I can have you for free. And then we'll see what you think of my offers then. Can you play any position with competence? No. You're basically a first baseman. I'll take Mike Greenleaf then. He's a good enough pitcher that I'm happy to pay him this slot. Why do you think you're worth $4 million? I don't get it. I think I'm going to have to do it. But it feels like a silly choice, but whatever. All right. 
Um, Steve Cooper is not a center fielder, but is decent. Kevin Monroe's a pretty well-rounded hitter. I think adding him to our collection is a reasonable decision. I feel like I've, I've ignored pitching in this draft, and that may come to bite us. But we need better hitters. We desperately need better, more reliable hitters. Zach Bougere is not a shortstop, but I don't think it's actually a problem. I think if we taught him second base, he'd do quite well there. Or even third base. Um, and I think his offensive skill set is pretty well-rounded. So I think he is a good selection. I'll pay him a six hundred and fifty grand. Okay, Mike Locke. No. You're a very weird pitcher, but it's still a useful one. I think. I think. Trapping you makes a little bit of sense. Let's go ahead and make that happen. Um, who else do we have that has really good content? Rusty Faber is not bad. Dave Leticia is even better. Let's grab him. That feels like the right decision. He wants his modicum of cash. Fine. Um, fielding gratings at center field, at least 50. I'm going to change this to fielding future. Fielding future CF. I thought I said 55. Oh, I did say 50, didn't I? What if I did 55? No, I'm going to leave it as 50. I can't be that picky. Joe Hamilton, I'm probably overdrafting you, but I do need more center field skills, so I will select you. All right, clear field here. Deshaun, Deshaun Mooks, welcome to the club. Here is your Sacco cash. And the worst are looking at pitching. Um, I can't completely ignore pitching for a draft. And while I doubt very much there's any really good pitchers left, there might be. There could be. Um, Nate Gross isn't bad. Just a bit of a soft tosser for what we're going to expect from him. Yeah, Jeff Bryan doesn't do it for me. Let's go ahead and grab, um, Nate Gross. Oh, he's impossible. Draft.
there's always my favorite kind of pitcher, the pitcher with absolutely no control. I can fix him. Uh, look, it's a fucking 13th round draft pick. This isn't the time to take a, a, a giant leap. I don't know when it is. Um, hmm. You're pretty good. Damani Fantanat is certainly not a flawless pitcher, but he's got a lot to like. Um, and I'm fully ready to, to give him a shot and see if we can turn him to something greater than he currently is. And I'll also draft Brad Adams. Only four picks left. Let's switch back to hitting and see who might be left. Any big old thumpers left? There are medium thumpers left. I will select Kurt Ritchie. Or Jeff Schmo. Oh, you gotta go with Jeff Schmo. Yeah. Sure, I can take a chance on Josh Carmichael. Ron Glass. And any good Patai guys left? Welcome to the club, Dave Gentile. Where's our pal Muhammad from? He is from Cincinnati. Wild. Um, is this a draft class full of amazing players? I think there's definitely some real talent here. But we didn't really fix our biggest need, which was a top quality center field prospect. Mr. Spoon here is fine. But he's not top quality. He's merely good. Uh, I do think Jonathan Knippers, I will put up against any other offensive prospect in the draft. I think he's got that much potential to just brutalize baseballs like they're going out of style. And I think Mr. Stuff here is also very high quality. Um, but as far as like super exciting thrilling prospects, I don't think there are any. I just don't think they exist in that particular draft class. Especially picking as low as we have been. Like we regularly have one of the best records in the league, which just means... When it comes time for the draft, we're always picking in the bottom five. And to be clear, that is a good thing. I would rather be very successful and occasionally have, yeah, fuck you, Sandoval. You weren't going to stay anywhere. I would trade you for a bag of baseballs. You don't have to be good baseballs. These have to be baseballs. No basketballs, though. I draw the line there. Wow, really? I think you probably realize how shitty he is, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna... No, fuck off. Somebody claims him, they claim him. I do not care. I mean, you're pitching pretty poorly. I think getting rid of you is actually a smarter decision rather than giving you a fucking raise. So yeah, off you go. Have fun. I think we call up Archuleta and we let him get some reps. I think is fine. I think is an okay decision to make. One of the decisions of all time. Eob just threw a no-hitter casually. I'm sorry it's not one person's asked about him. That is such a wild thing to me.
Give me Max Clark. Okay, Max Clark is really good, but also really expensive and very injury prone. And you're not needing any of his contract, so this is a ridiculous decision, and I refuse. Just no. That is such a bad deal for me that I I have a hard time imagining what it is actually worse. Like, that's deliberately worse. Damn, Acuna is uh, is getting up there, man. <laughs> Damn. It feels like I should have a picture, uh, a, a buyer's market here, a seller's market. People should be like, holy shit, he's actually just through a fucking no-hitter. Give me everything for him. But, like, doing it for one player just seems really stupid, unless that player is, like, the most elite of all prospects. Hi. He's error prone. Okay, that's actually a potentially really good, a really good trade. Chris Playgrove is not that exciting. I feel like I have to go for that. Is he a flawed center fielder? Yes. His, the fact that he's error prone does concern me, but he hasn't actually made any errors, so I think his superior range will more than make up for that. I want to discuss this deal because I would like to get a, uh, a prospect other than Corona. Would you give me Bobby Colbert? Eh, he's not even that interesting. Stevan Benitez. I like him a lot. I wonder if I could get LaCourcia here. That is a really good deal. What can I get greedy? I ask her to throw in somebody else potentially. No, this is fine. Um LaCourcia is a really good infielder. <clears throat> Ortega's got some decent upside, and Bush is instantly a top quality starting center fielder. So I think we make this trade happily. This does leave me in a bit of a pickle as far as my my any starting pitching, but getting guys as good as Mike Bush are extremely worth it. Um, I will add LeCourcier to the 40 man, but then I'm going to send him to the minors for the moment, I think. Question mark. Yeah, I think that's the right call for the moment. I'll send him to the minor leagues. And then Ortega goes right to AAA. I gave this fucker a major league contract already? Why? Okay. Um. So how are we going to fix the rotation? Where are we going to find ourselves a decent starting pitcher that can fill in for the rest of the year? I will happily take a rental if that's what it takes. For the right rental, I will I will open up my virtual pocketbook. Interesting. 
There are starters on the market, but they're not terribly exciting. Shane McClanahan could still start, I bet. I mean, he is coming off of a pretty shitty year, though. Maybe he's not the right fit. Good old Jim Resendez. We could bring him back. Let me sort the trading block by pitching, and then we can start looking through it. I think that's a more likely to be successful here. I guess it's all pitchers, but no one here is actually a pitcher besides Bryce Eldridge. Um, sort by pitching ratings, please. The only starters. Reed Detmers. Taj Bradley. No, Detmers is a poor choice. Um, even though he wouldn't cost me very much, I don't know that he actually adds all that much to the table. He's actually had a rough few seasons, so I think we pass on him. Uh, Rob Howard, on the other hand, is a little bit more interesting to me. Good control, three good pitches, not a starter, he's a reliever. <clears throat> He's a good one, but he is a reliever. Um, I don't want to speed all anyway. Done. I don't know if Rob Howard is the answer to any of my questions, but he is certainly a pitcher. Oh, so Espinal's not even on the major league roster, is he? Anybody else whose contract is almost up that I would like to consider moving for a prospect at this point? Not really. Like, Harmon is just throwing garbage time innings anyway, so it's hard for me to get too excited about him. We can ask. I did actually mean to look at regulars, too. Let's see if that changes the equation for you. Veteran. Now you're just offering me two older guys, neither of whom are that interesting. Yeah, I will I will and I will pause I will skip this and see if anybody else has something to offer me. You do have something to offer me. Give me Julio Mora. Julio Mora is actually a pretty good pitcher. And neither of these guys are close to the major leagues. Done. That just makes me better. There's literally no downside to acquiring Mr. Mora here. Um, I'm going to send Carrillo to AAA. He's really struggled this year. But we can let Julio Mora have his spot. I think that's good. Oops, I just meant to sim, skip one sim. That was my mistake. I have made an error. Hopefully there wasn't like an amazing trade that I just missed out on because I wasn't paying attention. It wouldn't stop me if that, it wouldn't surprise me if that is what happened though. Okay, 
Monace is declining slightly. Howard is getting better. Tomlinson is getting better. Cryer is getting better. Mr. Lemon is getting worse. Nelson Castillo is getting better. Stefan Lembrick is getting better. Good, 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 good. You love to see it. Sergio Bello just got worse, which is sad. That is sad. Um, I do want to shortlist Mr. EO here. I want to see... Oh, I already am. Okay. I want to see how he does and how much money he gets in the offseason. Um, like, maybe it's playing him at Farkas and holding him back, but... I feel relatively strongly that there is that there is a market um, that there is players that we could acquire that will be almost as good as him for significantly less resources. Um, Julio Sandoval, finally. There you go. This is another year I could really use the first round buy, but I just have not been able to compete with the Yankees. Um, like, I've been right there with them the entire season, but I haven't been able to surpass them. Um, I don't know if it's just Escalante, but it certainly doesn't hurt to have one of the best players in the major leagues on your team. If we could put together a nice little run here of just like winning five or six in a row and then like the Yankees losing a couple, I would feel really good. Whoa. Man, Alcalante and Zapata are going to be fighting for best player in the American League for years to come. And I don't think there's any, like, I don't think there's a wrong answer to that question either. They're both really good. Um, Alejandro Rivera should probably be getting a lot more attention than he is. He is my starting catcher at this point, right? Are we still starting Harry Ford for secret reasons? Yeah, Harry Ford needs to go. I feel we're starting him just because he makes more money, when in reality, Rivera is a far better player than he is. Like, it's not even a small thing, either. Like, he's really, really good. Um, But he's happy. And you know what? He's playing pretty frequently, so I'm not going to worry about it. Romero has not been the first baseman I hoped he would be. I'm having a sad moment. Uh, let's uh, let's just. Oh, roster is expanded. Brilliant. When do we get Jacoletto back? Not this rest of this season. Do we have a setback, or is he always going to be out for six months? Maybe he's always going to be out for six months. Um, I would like to get a few people some playing time. Mr. LeCourcier, Carrillo, um, Rosales, the Lemon, Cole Long, Jeremy Dorsey. Dusty Hackett, like every time I'm wanting to call him up, he just keeps getting hurt. Um, unfortunate. All right. Um, let's go ahead and advance to the end of the regular season. No, we cannot go on a losing streak right now. I desperately need this first round by. Pretty please the sugar on top. All right, let's have a chat. How close are we? To... Oh, if we beat Baltimore and the Yankees lose, 
They win the division. I win the division. And Baltimore is real bad, and the A's are actually pretty good. Oh, they've actually got... Yeah, they've got the A's left. Um, who owns a tiebreaker? I do. So as long as I win, I'm in. I did win the best ERA. Why did I not get an email that says I won a division? What? Okay, shoot. Okay. That is awesome for Ernie Jarvis. Um, he has had himself quite a season. Look at this absolute mad lad with his 2.14 ERA. That's crazy. That is cuckoo bananas. Um, let's start our playoff roster. We're literally really going to let DeCourcia play shortstop on this team. Has it Walensky done a pretty good job? All yeah, Walensky's done a fine job all season. I'd rather put Velasco, um, take him off the playoff roster and keep Walensky. I think Walensky has earned that. Like, I know he came out of nowhere, but he has been a pretty solid player. He's filling in for Giacoletto, so I think he's more than earned himself a chance to for the postseason. I think it's funny. The Luis Romero deal has clearly not paid off for me, at least not yet. It still might, but it does seem a little bit sussy. Oh well. All right, let us simulate up to the next playoff round. Zapata is very clearly the second best player in the American League. But the best player in the American League is a center fielder. And I think that's always going to hurt him when it comes down to um, what are we looking at? All right. Uh, Jarvis gave it his very, very best, but still... Our team decided not to hit any score any runs. Cool. That's two games in a row we decided that scoring runs is optional. I would like to invite you to hit the fucking baseball. No? Okay, we're just gonna get weakly destroyed. Like, they completely neutralized Sergio Zapata. That's very bad. That is not the kind of thing this team can absorb easily. Um, damn. Uh... I remember Steve Shindelli. Man, there were times when I thought he was actually going to be a pretty good center fielder, and then he just never played that well. I feel like maybe we burnt out trying to... What you call it? I feel like we burnt out trying to get that playoff spot, and then we just came out exhausted it's got to be less galante again as the mvp like i don't even think this is a debate like zapata is going to very clearly finish in second as he deserves to do but like no matter how good your offensive season is if your opponent is a center fielder who also won a batting title i feel pretty strongly that you're gonna that you're gonna be the guy. 
the dude. Um, are any of you guys interesting? Hmm. Oh, he's literally already been signed. I cannot sign him anymore. Disappointing. go to the end of the playoffs and then we'll break down the team. Oh boy, he's finally back. Jacques Aletto is such an amazing player, but him missing this entire season, we still won 106 games. So thanks to Valenti, who really carried the infield in a lot of ways, but I'm an OTP genius, but that doesn't feel as good as winning a World Series is. Well, I thought you decided to retire. I see how you are. All right. So who are the big contributors? What was the good stuff that happened this season? Sergio Zapata, obviously. Like, this man is so fucking ridiculous. We're so fortunate to have him. He's so good. He is so unbelievably good. It's just wild. Um, Gunnar Henderson chugging like a champ. A key piece to this team. He finally feels like the intersection of his raw talent level and his compensation are equal. I am concerned about his injury history. Um, so we want to make sure we have good young third base op options. But he definitely had a good season. Mike Bush is going to be a fascinating player. And I don't know what to expect from him other than playing pretty good center field, which he did. Um, he's a good center fielder. He's got lots of power. If he can make enough contact, I think he can be a successful player. Uh, Kellen Bulkley, man. I don't think we've had this much stability in the outfield corners in a long time. He just came out and had a starring role on this offense. Really appreciated. Chris Fowler. Josh Walensky. Came out of absolute nowhere to fill in when the heart and soul of the Silver Wolves was injured. Um, he's got a lot of potential. I'm glad to have him aboard. Harry Ford got too much playing time this year, but we only have him for one more year, and he's not coming back. Like Alejandro Rivera is ridiculous. I just keep developing great catchers. I'm not even trying at this point. Uh, Jacques Aletto's only fault was missing most of the season. Uh, Kurt Matthews is not the answer at first base. Uh, if he is, I don't know what the question is. I think we have to let Luis Romero have more playing time next year to actually show what he can do. This is one of the most fascinating collapses in a player's career. He got worse in every single way. He had one calling card, which was his elite power. That is now gone. This motherfucker thinks he's worth $15 million. No. He is not. He has ridden two amazing seasons and two acceptable ones, but I, I don't think it's worth it. If he was cranking out gold gloves every year, I'd be a little bit more willing to overlook his offensive flaws. $15 million is bad. It's not happening. 
I will happily trade him and let Walensky have a starring role as an infielder. Or any one of the copious number of other infielders I have that are competent. Um, my only regret is that I didn't trade him last season. But he is gone. Like, he is no longer a Charlotte Social Wolf the moment the next episode starts. Thank you for your service. That was fucking terrible. Um, and before you say it's probably Babbitt, I bet it is. His Babbitt was pretty bad, but not the far off of his uh, career high. This is a ginormous problem, especially when combined with that. A minuscule walk rate and a gigantic strikeout rate is fucking Rob Deere, Adam Dunn, Joey Gallo shit. And if you're not also hitting 30 plus home runs on top of that, you're not enough. If he wants to take like $5 million, I would happily do that. But I'm not paying him $15 million. That is such a waste of cash that I'll happily spend it on literally anything else. Um, I'm not bringing back Colton Hart. But let's look at our pitching, actually. Does Ernie Jarvis finally get a Cy Young Award? It would be sweet if he did. I'm not saying that he will, but it would be really cool if he did, especially how fucking good he was this year. Uh, Nate Quinn was phenomenal. Um, I love seeing great relievers pitch well, and we got that this year. If he's not reliever of the year, I don't know what else he has to do. Julio Mora, a nice little trade deadline pickup. Josh Batty, a perfectly fine starting pitcher. This is exactly what we were getting from Amari Eob at a fraction of the cost. Um, Jorge Milanes, I know his ZRA looks ugly. He is a worthy starting pitcher. Rob Howard pitched quite well. An incredible bullpen. Jake Ramos had a fantastic season. Chris Perry. I mean, Sergio Creo was really bad. Um... I think he definitely needs some more seasoning in the minor league before he's ready to take over full-time, but we'll at least give him the opportunity in spring training to show that he has another year. What do I think is going to happen next season? I am concerned deeply about our rotation now. It is almost a guarantee that Ernie Jarvis will be worse next year. Um, I'm not saying that to disparage him, but he had an absolutely insane strikeout to walk ratio, like better than he's ever had and probably ever will have. He's a really good starting pitcher, but he's not going to be Cy Young level again, I don't think, because his pitches aren't that great. That being said... I'm happy to ride this horse as long as I can. A uh, full year of Mora, more Batty, Milanes, Howard. We have several competent starters, but I don't have a true number two. Or somebody that can pick up if something happens to Ernie Jarvis. Like if he starts to slip a little bit, I don't know where our, where our, our next big pitcher comes from. Maybe it's Carrillo. I don't know. Um, I feel like Dusty Hackett has to be given a shot. I, I actually want to know what this joke is about. That's I'm curious, game. Tell me of this hilarious joke. But yeah, he's almost certainly got a chance to start next season for us. Um, always have an opportunity. But yeah, Chris Thomason is gone. Do I trade him now to end out the episode? I think maybe I try it. Let's just see. Look for a prospect package. What will we be what will we be talking about? I assume Cena is pretty good, but the rest of that uh package is pretty dire. It's pretty uninteresting. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, that raggedy arm. Mystic Vicar is not bad. Um, I'll like spear me. I feel like Juan Luera's. Power is doing a lot of lifting there. Okay, if I trade for Luera and try to get you to throw in a starting pitcher, how would that look? What about Domingo Valorama? I literally cannot afford him because he's that good. That's fair. If you have a second prospect you're willing to trade, like I will upgrade this offer if I can get at least one more decent prospect out of you. But Dave Wheaton, I'd actually quite like to have his arm in my bullpen. No. You love some Dave Wheaton. Okay, what about Jeremy Trant? Uh, fuck off. Castro isn't bad, but he's not terribly thrilling. I don't think he's the right return. I wouldn't say no to Jimmy Boyce. No, you're asking for way too much in return. Uh, how about Josh Thompson? You want Wilson Ventura? You can have Wilson Ventura. I think this is a fine, I think this is a reasonable deal. I wonder if you'll throw in David Pisano if I ask. Really? You like Pisano so much you won't even put him on your 40 man, but all right, fam. You do what you gotta do. Jesus Malcolm is an interesting player, but not a shortstop. What if we acquired Josh Mapes? Nice. And then how about J-Man Kim? This is a reasonably good deal for a guy who is coming off a career week, a career low. I guess, uh, what about Joe D? I love it. Complete trade. I'm sorry the fans are bummed, and Chris Thomason represents an important uh, piece to our future success, uh, to our past success. He is not worth what he's asking. He just isn't. Um, I did shortlist him already, right? Yeah, I did. The fifth overall draft pick did not make it to a second contract with 
did not make it through his reagent contact with the uh, silver wolves. Like, this might be a garbage deal. I don't know the answer to it yet. But I think we got enough depth. But we really helped with our farm system. Um, let's quickly... Okay, everyone is where they need to be. Brilliant. I love it. That's going to conclude our episode. Um, so farewell to Chris Thomason. Um, I would say I wish him well, but I'm not sure how well I wish him. Uh, but until next time, this has been Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.